This is my mastery project for the Sensation and Perception Unit. I divided the information into the four main sections. The first section is binocular cues. Binocular cues are taken in by both eyes and enable depth perception. The first subcategory is retinal disparity. In my example, the photos show how the right eye can see the striped stocking while the left eye can't. This is due to the differences projected onto the retinas because of the space between the eyes. When you use both of your eyes, both images are merged together. The greater the disparity between the image, the closer it is to you. This obviously takes place in the retina. Second is convergence. The eyes converge inward when looking at an object. A close object can be identified as having a larger angle of convergence between the eyes and more muscle strain exerted. A distant object can be identified as having a smaller angle of convergence as seen in the graphic on the right. I used a lemon to display this cue. In the left photo, I held a lemon farther away from my eyes. As I brought it closer, nearly touching my nose, my eyes moved inward. An area where the strain exists is the medial rectus muscle, which is circled in the right image. Section number two is perceptual constancy. Perceptual constancy describes the tendency of humans and animals to see familiar objects as having consistent shape, size, color, and location regardless of change. Color constancy. This describes the belief that familiar objects hold consistent color even if change in illumination alters wavelengths. For example, this red apple is perceived as red even in poor lighting. The cones in the retina adjust to the light levels in the environment. This cone activity is computed in the primary visual cortex of the brain, as shown in the image on the right. Next is shape constancy. We perceive an object to maintain its shape even when our distance from it varies. I chose to use an opening door as my example. In the far left image, the door is closed and is obviously a rectangle. As the door opens wider and wider in images 2 and 3, the door visually changes shape. Due to shape constancy, we know that the door isn't transforming, but instead moving. After looking at many sources, I found that a part of the brain responsible for this phenomenon is the extrastriate cortex located in the occipital cortex. Size constancy is similar to shape constancy. We perceive an object to maintain its size even when our distance from it varies. As an object moves away from us, the eyes believe that it's shrinking, while the brain knows that it's just increasing in distance. This occurs because of the way the retina senses distance. I used my dog Maverick to display this. From photos 1 to 4, I moved farther and farther away from her. It appears that she's shrinking when I know that I'm just increasing the distance between us. Section number 3 is monocular cues. Monocular cues give us information about depth and distance. Though we perceive these everyday cues with both eyes, they're able to be sensed with just one retina. Watching. The first of this section is motion parallax, which is identical to relative motion. As we move, stable objects appear to move as well. Objects once in front of you will appear to move backward. If a stationary object is farther from you, it will appear to move slower and vice versa. I walked down the street with my eyesight focused on a small tree. As I walked forward, the tree appeared to move backward. Motion parallax is caused by movement upon the retina of the observer. Linear perspective conveys our perception of parallel lines meeting in the distance. The sharper the convergence angle, the greater the perceived distance. Depth is believed to exist on a flat surface. This is how the brain and eyes make sense of what's near and far. I took a picture of a narrowing road in my neighborhood to depict this. Next is texture gradient. As a group of an object move farther away, they appear to become more and more dense compared to the area that is closer. It's simply the appearance of depth. We notice more or less detail depending on the distance between our eye and the objects at hand. I took a picture relatively close to the ground of a large grass patch. You can see the singular blades of grass towards the bottom of the photo, but as distance increases, the blades appear to be more dense. Relative clarity describes how sharp and detailed objects are perceived as closer compared to hazy objects. The eye focuses on them more. Compared to the grassy landscape in the background, the sharp metal generator sticks out. Interposition claims that if our view of an object is blocked by another object, it appears to be closer. Because we can't see the entire back object, we believe that it's farther away. This has to do with depth perception. I took a picture of a candle that was partially covered by a pencil cup. Because the entire candle isn't in view, it seems to be farther away. Relative size tells us that if two objects are assumed to be similar in size, the majority perceives the one with the smaller retinal image to be farther. Because the retina interprets an object to be smaller, it believes that it's farther as well. I chose to stagger two pop cans with one closer to the camera. 
the can on the right looks smaller, so it appears to be farther too. Height in a plane and relative height are the same. The higher that an object appears in our field of vision, the farther away it appears. I used three staggered pop cans to display this cue. The top right can looks higher, therefore it seems the farthest away. For example, artists make objects higher in pieces to make them appear in the distance. The last section is the Gestalt grouping principles. These principles were first proposed by Gestalt psychologists to describe the way that humans naturally perceive objects. Figure ground. The organization of objects can make them stand out from their surroundings. This method of perception is important for visual recognition. It was difficult for me to find a real-life example of figure ground, but I think that a page of a book depicts it well. The dark ink stands out from the cream-colored pages. Proximity tells us that we group nearby figures together. Even if the shapes, sizes, and colors of the given objects are different, the brain and eyes are able to group them if they're close enough. The Adidas logo uses close lines to, cre to create a clover-like shape. The brain groups them together. Similarity tells us that elements that are similar to each other are more likely to be perceived as related. Similarity can include features such as color and size. These crocs are different shades of purple. The similarity in the color makes them seem related. Continuity shows how we perceive smooth patterns rather than ragged ones. For example, if a pattern was arranged on a line or curve, our brain would perceive it to be related in comparison to a scattered pattern. I couldn't find an Amazon box with the logo itself inside my house, but the Amazon logo uses continuity to display that they carry everything from A to Z. The eyes are able to follow the orange arrow. Next is closure. We fill in gaps of an image to create a whole object. This illusion occurs unconsciously and can often be reversed by small changes to the image. The white parts of the converse create a semicircle that the eyes can complete. Connectedness shows that elements that aren't connected can seem to be that way due to perception of visual properties. These almonds appear to form a single unit, though they aren't truthfully doing so. Lastly is common fate. This principle that describes organization states that objects that function together or move in the same direction inherently belong together as a single unit. I couldn't find a flock of birds outside, so this photo is off the internet. Because they're moving in the same direction, they seem to be moving as a single unit. That's it for my project. Thank you for watching.